Jeff Mills, obviously he needs no introduction. He's basically the techno icon. The more I listen to him, the more I see how he's influenced producers in the techno genre and beyond. And today we're gonna to be recreating our own grooves using the Analog Rhythm Mark II, which I have been eager to do a video on, so happy to be here with it. We'll also be incorporating the Oxy One. I really like the combination of these two sequencers together. Of course, we'll be using Jeff Mills as an inspiration for this groove. If you have another Electron unit, pretty much across the board, their sequencers are very similar, so you'll be able to follow along with this as well. For those of you who are Jeff Mills fans, you know that he has like a giant repertoire of music to choose from. A lot of it is bad. Personally, at this point, my favorite music of his is like that old school techno, almost like tribal era that everyone's drawing inspiration from to this day. Because of the samples that we're gonna be using, we're gonna land in a completely different spot than the track we're drawing inspiration from, especially with the addition of the Oxy One using matricial mode. So we could just completely change up melodies in any way that we want. There is another Patreon exclusive version of this video where I'm using the Diggy Tac 2 and essentially using it in the same way. So along with the Oxy One, there's a link to that in the description, a ton of other exclusive content over on my Patreon as well. So go check that out. And if not, maybe you'd be interested in my Discord, which is a free server. There's a bunch of tech brains over there. So if you have specific tech questions or you just like to get that conversation going it's a great place to do that so link for that in the description as well here is the track we're going to be drawing inspiration from it's called ticket to thrillville so what is happening first off there is definitely a four on the floor kick going on which i'm just going to throw in and there it is there's something on that end of one or step three so we're actually going to add this through the matricial sequencer so i'm going to set this one to channel three so now it's going to be controlling the rim shot there it is and we'll change the delay to an eighth note delay because that's what it is in the reference as well i'm hearing this boom i'll throw this rhythm into the analog rhythm so as is i mean it sounds good but to me, it sounds a little bit dry. I like to add a bit of variation to this. So this is where I could param lock certain things. And this is what I love about the analog rhythm is that you have the sample and the source page. So sample is if you want to just play a sample or layer a sample over top of the source. This is great. What I love about the source page though, on its own, is that it gives you so many more parameters to work with, to tweak. And I just love how you could get these to sound. Let's play around with the decay. We could even add like a more percussive element to some of these. Like this one, I'm adding noise onto these. Maybe add a snap onto this one as well. And then overall, I'm gonna bring the noise down to make it sound a little bit more like a bass. I'm gonna tune this one up as well. Next thing I'll take a look at is the hats. I'm hearing like a more reverbed out on the upbeat, so let's find a hat for that. I'm actually not super fond of these hats yet. I find I haven't really worked them into my sound. They're very 808 old school sounding, so I tend to lean more on samples for my hi-hats. Maybe something like this, bring the volume up, add a ton of reverb to this. Maybe some overdrive and just throw those onto the ups. See what we got so far. Unmute that. Experiment with different hats. Maybe some bit reduction. Behind these up hats, there's like a chicka 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 going on, like a train sort of thing with a second pair of hi hats. So let's add that in through the Oxy One. I'll make sure that this channel within matricial mode on the Oxy One is set to nine. So we're controlling this hi hat here, and I'm just going to fill in all of the notes, all the triggers. And we get something like that. Honestly, that could work. Maybe that's the sound that you're going for, just a straight, like robotic sounding 16th note thing. If you'd like to change it or spice it up a little bit, I'm on the velocity uh, parameter here. I'm gonna change this. And right off the bat, we get all these random velocities. What I could do on top of that is change the note length of the velocity parameter. So now it's an odd time. 
so it's in a group of five, so it, make, it gives this like weird sort of feel. It's no longer like a chugga 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 thing, like the Jeff Mills reference. This is what I like about this, is that we're taking a step away from that and making it our own thing. What I could do on top of this, right now it's just generative, it'll just keep go going in groups of five, like a true, I guess, odd time rhythm you would call it. What we could do is change the length of this entire pattern to 60 notes. So I'm gonna hit play and it repeats. This is very subtle. But it gives some sort of structure and like repetitiveness to this groove. It makes it a bit more hypnotic. At certain points in the reference, there's also like a conga thing over top of the bass. So we're actually gonna choose this voice here, which currently is not a conga. This is the closest thing I have to a conga, it doesn't sound like a conga, but we're gonna go with it. Don't go, 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 don't go, 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 don't. Let's just solo these voices for now. Again, this is a little bit square. I like to always add intonation. Uh, I'm gonna change the filter type to a low pass. Again, if, if you're not down with this sample or any other sample uh, in, in your exploration, let's say, just change it out. That's sick. I like these hi-hats. Kind of like a 909 thing. Most of us probably already know this, electron sequencers are just the cream of the crop, especially in terms of integrating into themselves. Like if you were to introduce an external sequencer, you just wouldn't have that same per step precision as you would with an electron unix standalone. On the other hand, the Oxy one has its own flexibility, especially with some of the creative sequencers like matricial mode, which is what we're on, as well as stochastic, which I haven't checked out yet. And this is why I think that this is such a great combination. You can get that per step precision from the analog rhythm. And then if you wanna add some extra little flares or have some ideas introduced to you that you wouldn't have come up with otherwise, that's where the Oxy one comes into play. Let's take even a few steps back from the reference, starting very simply with this, bop, bop, the end of one there. So I'm gonna to go to notes and I'm gonna randomize it so it'll just create a random sequence of notes. Cool. Maybe we can even play with interval on this, perhaps. Just add an interval thing here. If we want to, we could combine the strengths of both of these sequencers, right? So currently this sequence, the rim shot sequence is empty here. So maybe if we, Add those notes in, but maybe let's say every fourth time through. And I'll also change the filter on one of these notes. There we go. So now we got something different. I definitely also want to change the notes on this bass thing, but we already entered it into the analog rhythm. So how do, what, what do we do here? Let's take some of these notes out. I'm gonna set up a third voice here on the matricial sequencer. Set this to channel five, see what happens. If I want completely different results here, I could change up the scale to maybe Japanese. That's my favorite one. like a certain dissonance to it. At this point, I don't even have to check. I already know that I'm super far away from the Jeff Mills reference that I just gave you guys. Let's push it even further. What we could do with, this is like obviously a one shot sample. Let's take the source down and I'm gonna upload, I guess we could call this like a more complex sample. So it's not really a one shot anymore. This is a hit or a miss. I don't know if this is gonna work. So these are much longer samples. Definitely take that delay send down. Maybe pitch this up. You could even experiment with where you start in the sample. And it's really about searching until you find something that fits and then just going with it. There we go. So there we got something a little bit more rhythmic. 
I don't like this idea, but it gives you an idea of what direction you could go in with this sort of thing. Actually, currently in the process of creating a sample pack using the Analog Rhythm Mark II. And this is the method that I've been using. Like I said, it's kind of hit or miss, but eventually you're gonna land on something that sounds really original and you could just push it even further. Especially when the rest of your sequence is strong, built and already looping. I think that adding a longer sample like this is a great way to make everything sound a bit more real. Like there's gonna be artifacts in that sample. In fact, that's something that Jeff Mills does a lot of. He does a lot of sampling in techno. If you've made it this far in the video, chances are that you're someone who creates electronic music like this. Maybe you want a way to officially release it independently. And in that case, go with DistroKid. They are definitely the best choice. Let's get into reasons why. In terms of what's new, they recently released a smartphone app, which makes checking your important DistroKid stats easy and accessible. The app is now available on Android through the Play Store. Essentially everything that you've been able to do on the DistroKid desktop app, you're now able to do through your smartphone. In fact, here's a list of key features that the app offers you. You might wanna pause it now if you wanna check them out. In today's day and age, we all know how many hats we have to wear as artists and producers. It can just be a lot, so write the music produce the music. Then you've got to create content to promote it a few weeks before it's released. Then you've got to continue creating content after it's been released to promote it. It's a lot, and I'm not saying that DistroKid does all of this work for you, but they do make it a lot easier for us with the free promotional tools that they offer. The one I use most is Hyperfollow. It's essentially a free landing page or link tree. It's super clean. You could link maybe your latest video, your latest single, other important links you'd like to lead people to. I also use promo cards whenever I release a single. Just select the single that you would like to promote and it'll auto generate a few different uh, options for you to choose from. Go with DistroKid, it's just over $20 a year to release unlimited music to all major streaming platforms. You keep 100% of your streaming royalties. So many other tools that they offer for someone who's independent, they're, they're made for us. And there is a discount linked in the description of this video if you would like to join. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to dig even deeper, there's a DiggyTac 2 version of this over on my Patreon. If not, feel free to join the Discord. There's a bunch of other tech people uh, that have been joining. It's really popping recently, which I'm, uh, I'm really happy about. Join us all there. It's good vibes, comments all day, synth stuff. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for being here.